Continuous probability distributions. We've taken the leap out of discrete, and now we're in the continuous case. What do I mean? We're no longer counting on the integers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, our variables can assume any values on a number line. Think about time. Think about height. Right. We're talking about continuous distributions, like I wasn't this tall without at one time being this tall, and being this tall, and being this tall, and being this tall, I had to assume them all. That's a continuous probability distribution. And, or that's a continuous random variable, but a continuous probability distribution has these two properties. One, the distribution, everything underneath the curve, has to add up to be one, because it's a probability distribution. So if we add up all of our probabilities, it adds up to be one. Fun. Next, each one of the probabilities of an interval is uh, in between 0 and 1 because it's a probability. But moreover, the probability of a single event happening is 0 because it has no measure. So let's take a look at some of those homeworks. We already talked about 1, 2. Let x be a continuous random variable. What is the probability that assumes a single value? That's zero, because you can only measure intervals. Next, we look at these intervals. For a continuous probability distribution, why is the probability that a is less than x is less than b equal to the probability that a is less than or equal to x and is less than or equal to b? Well, here we see that since the probability of a single value is zero in a continuous probability distribution, then it doesn't matter whether or not the probability interval, or the interval that you're calculating the probability for, includes the endpoints or not, because they have no measure. That's clever. What's next? Normal! Normal!